Welcome to another Empires and Puzzles Books video. Today we're going to be talking about working a quote-unquote bad board. So whether you go full mono like I usually do, if you prefer 3-2 or 4-1, chances are you're going to have an opening board that does not have a lot of the colors that you need for the elements that you chose for your heroes. Let me be upfront and tell you, I don't believe there is such thing as a bad board. The initial starting board is just that. It's initial starting board. Sometimes we'll have tons of our colors. Sometimes we won't have very many. Most of the time we'll have kind of an even spread of colors. Uh, and I've documented that in my other videos that show that the boards truly are random. So the question is really, what do we do when we don't have a lot of our colors on the board? And for me, I have a couple different strategies that I use to... Uh, switch the board chemistry and I'm going to go through those in this video but the short answer is the opening board doesn't determine if it's bad or not um, I think we have about three to five moves depending on the heroes involved to completely change board chemistry and a lot can happen in those three to five moves if you know the types of moves to look for to switch the board chemistry so if you're interested in figuring out what to do with a bad board continue watching this video thanks for your time okay so mono attack on a green tank with fire heroes and this is the opening board two red tiles about as far away from each other as they can be so how do you work a board like this well we have three to five moves until all hell breaks loose and it becomes a mess so the big thing that I'm seeing here is I have a, a nature and ice switch that I can do in the middle of the board that will also set off an ice diamond on the right side of the board so there's going to be a lot of craziness here, and hopefully this is the first move in changing the board chemistry. Alright, so we're up to five reds on the board, but they are nowhere near each other. That was only one move, and we more than doubled the number of my fire tiles on the board. So I'm going to make that holy diamond now and set that off and really see if we can change the board in a big way. I'm not afraid of big moves at the beginning of the game because it's kind of like getting a brand new board. In fact, it's better than getting a brand new board because I'm eliminating a lot of the other elements that are on the board, which increases the chances that I'll see more of the chosen color. Okay, we're gonna move on to another example. I'm not gonna play all of these raids out. I'm sure you can imagine how these end. Let's just keep talking about the opening boards. So here's another example, starting out with only two fire tiles. Not really worried about Albia's tank, so I have some good space there that I can just send tiles up the center of the board to try to change the board chemistry. Looks like I have potential to make some diamonds here of the off colors, and that's going to be my goal. Again, I just want to do some, some big moves at the beginning to completely rewrite what this board looks like. Not satisfied with what I have here, so can't be afraid to make those large moves to change the board. And there I'm set up already for one diamond. Now at this point, you're going to see that there's going to be some fire tiles on the board, but they're not ideally located. So I can make one match. That's not really going to do anything for me. I want to make still one more big move. There's not a lot of mana on the enemy. I want to change this board even more. I want to get a lot of fire tiles on the board. So I'm going to take a bold move here. That, that nature diamond is going to set off the, the yellows in the second to last column there. And now look at the difference of this board. Totally different game than what we started with. Okay, is this a start bad starting board or is it not a bad starting board? Looks pretty bad. Two tiles that are on color of my mono team. But as I always say, you don't know a bad starting board until you're three or four moves in. I have a good three to five moves here to change the chemistry of this board. I'm not particularly excited about my chances with this board just because I'm not seeing some big matches. I usually like to make some big matches to try to clear the board and flip a lot of tiles. So, uh, the lack of options here are not going to be great, but we'll see what we can do with this. So this will make a couple combinations. I like to see like a four or five combination to get things really moved up, but I don't think that's going to happen here. The other challenge is, uh, if you don't kill Mitsuku right away, she ends up being really tough on a blue. Oh, that works. 
That's what I was saying. You need those big combinations to flip the board. As I was going to say, if you don't kill Mitsuku right away, she reflects blue and it becomes really tough. Well, that was some very lucky hits there. Okay, here's another board that started out with only one fire tile. So as I've been saying, I'm looking for a big move to change this board chemistry. Draw your attention to the top left corner. If I make that single match that makes three holies horizontally with three darks horizontally, that's clearing out six tiles. That's going to bring some tiles up in the center of the board, which is going to also make at least a three tile ice connection at the bottom. So one move, I'm going to clear out nine tiles at a minimum. So that's nine that are off the board. That's going to give me the opportunity to have more fire pop up. Uh, with nine tiles being moved, I should get at least one or two more fire. Uh, if luck is on my side, there will be more than two. So let's go ahead and make that move and see how this turns out. Check that out. The nature tank is already half dead with just one move. Still only have two fire tiles on the board. I'm going to make that ice diamond in the bottom left and set that off and see what happens. Again, this is only two moves in. That automatically sets itself off. And look at the difference in that board. So much for starting with a bad board. Guess who won this one? I don't know that it gets much worse than this. Not a single tile on the board that matches my mono team. But the reality is I'm still only four or five moves away from making a dark diamond and totally flipping this board and winning this game. As we've been discussing, you can't be afraid of making big moves to really move a lot of tiles around at the beginning of a game. With this particular one, I'm not really afraid of setting off Guinevere because you know she steals mana. I don't even have any mana yet. So this is a great opportunity to go ahead and take some bolder moves to move some tiles around and see how we can change this board to be more favorable to myself. That one move there, three combination, got rid of nine tiles, added two more combinations onto that. Fifteen tiles just moved off the board. We're getting a lot more dark in there, and now we just made our purple diamond. Do you see it? Game over. Everything's changed from this point forward. Four moves in. All right, at this point, you should get an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm going to play out a few more opening boards without narration. Hopefully, you can start predicting and seeing the kinds of moves I'm making to flip the board. Hope this video has been a help for you. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope that you don't fear what some players call a bad starting board. Like I keep saying, it takes a few moves in to determine if it really was a bad board and is not something that you can work with. But I try to visualize that I can make a diamond of my chosen color within the first few moves, regardless of what the board looks like. 
that's kind of always the goal. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to shoot some comments below. Let me know what you thought of this. Good luck with your games. Thank you.